Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. Hey, how are you? Yeah. I'm doing good. Y'all, y'all like my decor? It's, it's beautiful. It's little, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna ask, beautiful. is that new? <laughs> Yeah, so I am currently uh, at Lackland Air Force Base. So I want to give a shout out to the Lackland, Lackland team for 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 facilitating uh, uh, an area with some some vintage artwork in the background, so I can do my chief chat today. Uh, so thank you for them. Uh, I'm in town for a retirement ceremony. Real good friends retiring today, so super excited. But I'm really uh, even more excited to uh, talk to my next guest. So without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is a seasoned reporter who helped start a movement in 2020 when he co-founded TAPS Across America, which honors our nation's fallen heroes in a special way each Memorial Day. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Steve Hartman. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Fade applause. <laughs> <laughs> So, Steve, it is a pleasure having you with us today, uh, and thank you so much for joining us on Chief Chat. Uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from? Where you're joining from today? I am in Troy, New York, today, um, based out of New York City. But with the pandemic, now we can live and work pretty much wherever we want. So, I'm here in Troy. So, is Troy is Troy up? Is that I mean, I, that's I consider it upstate New York. I'm sure it's upstate. Uh, yeah, it's it's near Albany. Albany's connected to Detroit. It's all, kind of all the same the same market. My kids go to school okay. up here. So, so we're here. My, my main house is in Catskill, New York, about an hour south of here. I say main house. Like Beautiful. I've got multiple houses. I'll show you the ceiling. See, this is not a, <laughs> this is not a fancy place of it. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think, I think Mike Tyson's from Catskill, right? He is. Now, how did you know that? Uh, you know what? I'm, I, I got a bunch of useless knowledge in this brain. It's, it's mostly <laughs> filled with water and, and a few things of useless knowledge. So uh, Jeopardy, yeah, I'm ready. Well, that qualifies as useless, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, speaking of things that happened in 2020, you teamed up with Air Force retiree Jari Villanueva to start TAPS Across America. So can you tell our viewers what this movement is about and how um, it all came to be? Well, this is an idea that was ruminating in my mind for, for a long time. I did a story probably almost 10 years ago about a guy named Don Britton who lived in Tacoma, Washington. And he would go out on his balcony every day at sunset during the summer and he would play taps. And I did a story on Don. And what struck me most about the story wasn't Don, although his playing was awesome and it was a beautiful sight. But the neighbors would all come out and they put their hands over their hearts and they would face him. And it was just a beautiful coming together for that community to commemorate the fallen mostly, but taps can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And so i had been thinking about this ever since, like, wouldn't it be nice if all of America could feel what I felt in that moment? And then the pandemic came and Memorial Day services were canceled and and I was parades and, you know, there really wasn't much for people to do. And so I, it's kind of an effort to, to um, preserve the meaning of the holiday. And I reached out to Yari and I explained this whole, that whole idea I had, you know, taps across America and everybody playing taps, you know, at the same time in unison and people coming out on their porches. And there was a pause and he said, you know, I've, I've been thinking the same thing. So that's how Taps Across America was born. And it's really that simple. We're just asking buglers and trumpet players, um, musicians of all stripes, to step outside at the moment of remembrance, which is three o'clock on Memorial Day, and play taps for whoever will hear. And if you do hear, we ask that you just step out and use those 24 notes to remember what the holiday is all about. And Taps Across America received a massive response with more than 10,000 musicians joining in. What was your reaction to so many people answering the call? 
Well, you know, I'm a I'm a feature reporter at CBS News. It's not my job to start national traditions. Uh, I, I don't even know what came over me. What made me think it was even possible? And I had I had no reason to believe anybody would play, let alone tens of thousands. But I think the timing was just right, and I think people were ready for something like this. The nation was fractured, still is to a large extent, and this was something that really brought everybody together in a single moment. Maybe the only thing that could bring everybody together in a single moment. And so that's, I'm guessing, why it took off like it did. And and I, I've always said I was kind of hoping it would become a tradition that would long live past me, and now I'm kind of confident it will. Oh, I'm definitely confident it will, because like I said, um, you know, you – what what started out was just a an idea can can turn into a legacy. So that's awesome that you uh you, you all kind of try to you know bring that to fruition. And, and of course we talked about it before we went on live and um and I kind of tell you my story that before I joined the military uh, I I wasn't I didn't grow up in a military family so I, I didn't know much about it. Um, but when I first got to boot camp and and I heard taps for the first time, man it it makes your skin crawl. Right. Uh, and, and it just does something to your spirit. So, uh, and, and so now that I know, and, and most people know, uh, that it carries an emotional weight, an enormous emotional weight when it's played, uh, what does it mean to you specifically, uh, when you hear those 24 notes? Well, I first heard taps, not in the funeral setting, but in boy Scouts, I was an, an Eagle scout and it was an end of day thing for us. So for us, it was a time to sort of reflect on the day. Um, so it still means that to me. And of course, you know, I've heard it many times since at Arlington and, and the many funerals I've attended. Um, and it becomes even more powerful the older I get. But you're right about those 24 notes. You said you didn't even know what the song was about. And the first time you heard it, it struck a chord, so to speak. Pardon the pun. And that's this song tells a story without a single word. You kind of feel what it's about. First time you heard, first time you hear it, mm-hmm. and um, that's part of the reason that I think this is um, has taken off like it has because uh, this this can mean a lot of different things, and um, it appeals to everybody, right, left, center. Um, it's a we have some people playing on Native American tribal lands, as you probably know. Uh, Native Americans per capita account for. Uh, Uh, have more people in the military than really any other ethnic group. And um, so it just shows how wide ranging um, the appeal is of this song and this mission. So you've also featured many stories of military members and their families. And what's it like to tell those stories of men and women that many people don't always get to see the personal side of? Yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. People don't get to see the personal side of it. You know, you just, um, I think it's easy. Military, the military is often covered in a very, under a very broad umbrella. Uh, but underneath that broad umbrella are individuals with uh, motivations that are unique to them and, and many stories that are unique to them. Um, I've, some of the, my favorite stories I've ever done center on military families. Um, I once did a story about a kid um, and you can Google this later if you want, but uh, he found $20 in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. And his first thought was to uh, give the $20 or use the $20 to buy a video game or something like that. And an airman walked in and uh, he wrote a note to the airman with the $20 bill and says, you know, we pay it forward to my family. And um, he explained that his dad had died in Iraq and he wanted to give him the $20. And that story spawned a movement. Uh, that $20 turned into $2 million that were eventually donated to Gold Star Charities. Wow. There's just so much goodness, uh, purity within the military that stories often tell, tell themselves. And I have never turned down a story um, that is even halfway decent about a military family because I just know it's going to be good and it's going to appeal to everybody. And Steve, we have many heroes and their families watching today live. Um, what message would you like to share with them? For, for military families? Uh, American um, their families. Here's what you sound like to me. 
So it makes it very difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you're breaking up. I'm sorry. What can I say? <laughs> Did you guys hear? Oh, yeah. So she, what she was saying, uh, America's heroes and, and their families are watching right now. So uh, the floor is yours if you want to uh, say about Americans. Oh, that's good. That's so it was a very it was a very broad question that makes it very easy to answer. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. <laughs> so I couldn't understand what you're saying. Um, no, I mean, just tell tell each and every one that you are heroes, no matter what your job is. Um, uh, I think sometimes a lot of the credit goes to the people high up, like the chief, you know, chief gets his own show and everything. But really, the military, <laughs> any organization, but the military, especially, um, every step of the ladder is an extremely important step. Um, and I would just say that, that you're all heroes. I, I often say that every American is a hero. They're just waiting for their moment. And uh, Chief has found his moment, obviously, you know, he's a big celebrity now. But for those who, <laughs> for those out there who who uh, who um, who haven't right, achieved the same level of celebrity as he has, you know, your moment's coming and, and you're already heroes in my book. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't say I was celebrity. And, and if I was a celebrity, I'm, I'm probably the lowest paid celebrity out there in the world. But but, I, but it's not, I'm not doing it for the money, obviously. Uh, but yeah. you know, I can't. I can't do anything without without the men and women that that raise their right hand to to help support all of us. And so, uh, yeah, I, I've I've endured through my 25 years of being in the military, and and uh, you know, just enjoy enjoyed the whole ride. To be honest with you, but uh, I do that on the backs of of the people that came before me and, and the men and women that that, uh, that 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 do it currently. And so, thank you so much for those kind words. Uh, and, and thank you for what you're doing. I kind of mentioned also before, before we went on live, uh, you, you have a bunch of different segments that you do, but, uh, one of them I saw was kindness one-on-one and we were talking about, uh, just, you know, needing more kindness in the world in general, I think. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think there is a lot of kindness in the world. I think, I think, uh, we're drawn to kind of negative thoughts or whatever the case may be or or that gets plastered on our timelines uh, more so than than kindness but thank you for for highlighting kindness uh because that that is important I, I i've got the cool thing about this podcast is i've been, been able to talk to a bunch of uh awesome folks and all of them are doing some some wonderful things for the world like they're, they're doing wonderful things for their fellow um, man and woman that uh that I'd never heard they, they were doing. And so, you know, but if, if they did anything that was, uh, you know, scandalous or whatever, then every, the whole world will know about it. So uh, I'm glad I get the chance to have this platform to kind of highlight the, the great things that, you, that that folks like you are doing for the country. Thank you. Yeah, I, I used to think you talk about, you know, the people that support you. And when I was younger, I, I think I, I, I had it in my head. One job I did not want was to to make speedometer needles. I don't know why it was speedometer <laughs> needles, but I just looked at that as the most trivial, unimportant job. And whatever I choose to do for a living, I did not want it to be making speedometer needles. And later, I think I realized that there really are no unimportant jobs. You know, so, some people, you know, they make a difference through their jobs, but that's not the only way to make a difference. People make a difference through their family and their faith and, and lots of other ways. And that lesson has been hammered home to me in this job. I once did a story not too long ago about the number four guy at the FBI who retired and he's now driving a school bus because he too believed that there are no unimportant jobs. That was not beneath him. That was just as important, if not more important, he said, than his job at the FBI. And that's just a really important you know, lesson. I should put that story on Kindness 101 when we bring that series back. And thanks oh, yeah. for mentioning Kindness 101. This is a this is something I'm doing with my kids now because we learned long ago that the stories that we produced for the evening news were being used in schools across the country. Uh, teachers were using these stories to teach character, character education, social emotional learning. They call it sometimes. You know, anti bullying. You know, uh, gratitude. Uh, you know, all the themes that we touch on in our stories. So we started packaging them for for kids. And then we found out that even though we're producing these stories for kids, it was mostly adults that were watching because I think sometimes we all need reminders about uh, kindness and, and all the themes that, that come come under that. So um, that's a project we're working on now. 
Awesome. Awesome. And so uh, kind of back to TAPS Across America, uh, it's going into its third year uh, and hopefully definitely something that uh, will continue for years to come. So what do you hope the legacy of TAPS Across America will be? Well, I would like someday that TAPS Across America is inescapable, that no matter where you live in America, if you step outside your front door at three o'clock on Memorial Day, you will hear TAPS lofting over the houses and that we can all, as one, remember the people that died in service to this country. Um, we're not there yet. I think there are still places you can go where uh, at three o'clock local time, you will not hear taps, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep uh, chipping away at that year after year. And we need a few more people to play the bugle or trumpet, but like I say, you can play any instrument, but fortunately some people are picking up the instrument just for this and they're practicing. Uh, so I think maybe, uh, uh, maybe someday that, that, that goal is achievable. No, and so tens of thousands of people have already participated in TAPS across America, which I'm sure many newcomers will this year as well. But of the ones that have submitted and participated, what's the most unique tribute that you've seen? Well, yeah, when I originally, you know, pitched this idea, I really just asked people to stand on their porches or in their backyard. But, you know, Americans, as they often will, took it to extremes. And we extra, get video extra. submissions. We ask people to submit their videos to uh, hashtag uh, CBS Taps on any social media platform so we can see what people are doing. And people are playing from the mountaintops. I don't know where they, where they are. It looks like they're at the top of the Alps, but they're up there, you know. And then the middle of the desert, many people are playing where nobody can hear. And I asked a woman about that just recently. I said, why are you playing when nobody can hear? And she said, well, the people that I want to hear can hear. And I say, you're playing to an audience above? And she said, yes. Um, people have played on airplanes. They're on a flight at three o'clock local time. So they'll stand up there at the front of the plane and they're playing their trumpet. Um, people play on the beach as a crowded beach. You know, on Memorial Day, you can imagine some guys standing there in the sand uh, playing taps. And the beautiful thing is people stop and they face the music and they put hand over heart. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I could spend days just watching the videos that pour in and we will show, you know, many of them on the CBS evening news, the Memorial day um, on, on the evening news, but it, there's so many more that we can't play. And I wish we could show them all because they're one's more beautiful than the next. Man, I, I can't imagine somebody getting up on a, on an airplane, and playing taps at their three o'clock, man, I, that is. That I, I wonder, did that person ask the flight attendant if it was okay <laughs> yeah. or did they just do it? But thunderous applause after he was done, as you can imagine, yeah. thunderous applause. Well, so I, I'm sure, I'm sure that people were looking at him sideways as he was probably starting to do it. And then once yeah. he realized what he was doing, then it was like, okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. That takes a little well, confidence, doesn't it? It does. It does. So uh, with Memorial Day uh, only four days away, can you tell us who can take part in TAPS Across America and how can they participate? OK, the best way to if you want to learn more about it, just go to uh, CBS.com slash TAPS and they'll tell you everything you need to know there. Um, we're looking for ideally buglers and trumpet players, but we've had trombone players. Uh, we've had everything short of a kazoo. and I really don't want a kazoo, but. Um, it's surprising how good taps can sound on other instruments. The most important thing is that people just play with heart. And if you do, if you can record yourself or get somebody to record you, we'd love to see the video. And again, you can send that to uh, or post that with the hashtag CBS taps and, and we'll see it. Okay, I'm going to try one more time. Steve, am I breaking up? Nope, you're not breaking up. Yes. Okay, I apologize for that earlier. I'm glad I was able to redeem myself. But Steve, we cannot thank you enough for being here today. And like I tried to share earlier, but Chief jumped in for me. Uh, we have so many people um, watching all over the world. And I wanted to just jump into our Facebook comments real quick. We have a few questions for you. Um, sure. The first question comes from Robert. Um, so he thinks that the Taps Cross America is a beautiful tradition, and he is asking what it's like for you to follow in the footsteps of, rip, of original on the road correspondent Charles Kuralt, and what's your pick for the most beautiful stretch of road 
you've seen. Okay. Um, well, Charles Kuralt, for those of you, we probably have some younger viewers who don't know, this is a guy who about 50 years ago went to the president of CBS News and said, you know, why don't you let me go around the country and tell feature stories? And the guy said, if you want to tell stories, go to Vietnam and tell them. And a uh, new boss came in and he asked the same question. Finally, they let him. And he kind of gave birth to the, to the feature story, the kicker story, whatever you want to call it, that, that, that news story that comes at the end of the newscast that kind of um, it makes up for all the death and disaster that has come before. It, it reminds people that, you know, what you've just seen is not the whole entirety of the human story. And um, following in Kralt's footsteps, who I watched as a kid, is one of the greatest honors of my career. And because he was, he was legendary, he was so good at what he does, and uh, it's humbling. Um, and part two of the question was, what was part two? Your favorite, uh, the most beautiful stretch of road oh, you've ever- of road. You know, um, the Black Hills of South Dakota, uh, are, um, are amazing. Um, that, that I would say is probably a favorite, favorite stretch of road. And if anybody owns a motorcycle, they've probably been there because it's just a, a great place to cruise in a convertible or a motorcycle. Um, that that's going to get my vote. And I've been, and I've been on most of those stretches. Uh, I used to do this, this thing behind me, everybody has a story. That's where I used to, for years would throw a dart at a map of America, went wherever the dart hit, and, and found somebody there and told a story about them. So you throw, start throwing darts at maps of, and you, you go pretty much everywhere. And so I've seen most <laughs> roads and that, that's, that remains one of my favorite areas there. Well, well, ho hopefully that, well, hopefully that dart doesn't hit the, the, the stretch between San Antonio and El Paso because there's nothing on that stretch <laughs> at all. Oh, it's funny. Darts make for very bad travel agents, I've learned. You know, they don't get any place you really choose to go. But yeah. that being said, so I've been to that stretch of desert. I'm sure of it. The first place the dart ever hit, I think, was uh, maybe Motley County, Texas or Glasscock County, Texas. But regardless, there was nothing there. Um, the <laughs> motel was uh, $25 a night and exorbitantly overpriced. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I've been to that stretch. But that's OK, because we found some great people and people that we would have never put on the news otherwise. That was the beauty of it. Stories we would have never told otherwise unless fate sent us there. And I did that for seven years. And, um, and I even went around the world. We threw we had astronauts in the space station spin a globe, point to places on the globe. And then we went to those places and did the same thing. Oh, wow. When we were there, we'd pick people at random out of the phone book. So we were picking random people and uh, telling random stories. But boy, they were pretty darn heartfelt. That's awesome. And we have another question from Janet. Um, she said that uh, she's asking, so you share some heartbreaking stories. Um, have you ever gotten emotional while um, interviewing them? Um, she's asking you if you've ever cried on the job. Yeah, I think she is, yeah. Um, <laughs> this, I cry a lot watching the stories, just like everybody else. As I'm out there you know, doing the interviews and putting them together, it doesn't hit me as much as when it's all said and done. And I play them and I watch them, especially if I watch them in front of a crowd. I'll, I'll give talks every once in a while. And if there's thousands of people watching and um, everybody's kind of having this cathartic moment. That really gets me. Um, there have been times in the field where I've lost it. There was one time I was doing a story about, it was one of these stories about a, a elementary school football team, and they had a, a, a manager on the team who had a, a mental disability, and he wanted to be in the game. So they came up with this play where he would go in the game one time and he would score a touchdown. And I was talking to the kids about that. And there was one kid I was interviewing who confessed to me that it was not his idea to let this kid score a touchdown and he never would have thought of it. And as he's telling me that, tears are streaming down his face because he had decided that he wanted to be a better person because of the example set by his friends. And as he's crying, you know, I start crying. I look back at the cameraman and he's crying. We're doing the interview in a library and I look over at the librarian and she's crying. Uh, so it, it has happened to me before. Um, but it's always happy tears. I mean, every, uh, every story I do, I'm actually, you know, people say they cry all the time and I should be sponsored by Kleenex, but I'm never trying to make people cry. I'm trying to make people joyful, you know, ha happy tears, I guess. So they're, they're always, they're always good tears. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to ask, we have time for one more question. So um, Greg is asking, how long does it take you to tip it? How long do you spend typically spent? I'm so sorry, Steve, this is not, I am not looking good in front of a CVS correspondent right now. Um, how much time do you typically spend writing each piece? Okay. Um, I'm typically on once a week, um, but I've got other duties that have to fit in there too. Uh, the writing, you know, I'm, I'm still we're recording this live right now and it's Thursday and I have, I'm still writing, you know, tomorrow's story. Um, so, you know, I write up to the very end um, and I'm not a very good writer, but I'm a pretty good rewriter where I recognize that, um, you know, what I just wrote is, isn't that good <laughs> and I need to <laughs> do it again <laughs> and I'll keep doing it. I'm, I'm tenacious enough. I'll keep doing it. Awesome. And we just have a lot of people liking and hearting and, and thanking you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. No, it's my honor and privilege. And, you know, I appreciate the opportunity, especially to talk about TAPS across America and helping, you know, anybody who can help me make this vision, you know, reality, I'm very grateful for. So just a quick plug for our viewers, you can go to facebook.com slash on the road CBS to check out Steve's amazing work. Steve, where else can our viewers go to learn more about TAPS across America and register to take part? Okay, again, you would go to cbs.com slash taps. And you don't even need to register, but if you have any questions about how do I do this, what is this, uh, go there. And then once you make your video um, and, and share that, if you don't play a trumpet or a bugle, you know somebody who does, so, so get them on board and tell them to play. And, um, and then once they do, videos uh, can be sent to uh, any, or posted to any social media platform using the hashtag CBS taps, and, and I'll watch them. Awesome. Yeah. So my, my son plays the euphonium. This is his first year playing the euphonium. And I couldn't even, to be honest with you, I probably couldn't tell you what a euphonium was before this year. Uh, and so he plays it. Uh, I don't, I don't think he's taps ready yet. Uh, taps ready. It's a little hard to learn. I'm told, I'm told, especially bugles or trumpets hard to learn. And then taps is a tough song to play. You think 24 notes, like I learn a note a day. I'm done in 24 days, but it's not, it's not that simple. I don't want to discourage people from picking it up. I actually want to encourage people from picking it up, but it's, it's harder than it looks. You think yeah, it's just, yeah, no. you know, but no, it's not that. Yeah. So, so my, my six year old Isaac, we, we're going to work on your taps uh, before you go out there <laughs> uh, in, in the neighborhood, <laughs> but, but, but it doesn't, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Let's no, not wait for perfection absolutely. or it may never come. No, absolutely. And I, I want to encourage all the, 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 the musicians out there in the world to, to get on board and, uh, and, and make this tribute to the, the folks that have made the ultimate sacrifice. And so thank you uh, for that. And for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify so you can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. We've got a double feature for you next week. So tune in on Tuesday, May 31st, when actor Aspen Kennedy will be joining us. And we are also excited to welcome our very special guest Thursday, June 2nd, the Undersecretary of the Air Force, Gina Ortiz Jones. Uh, we'll see you then. Uh, but Steve, man, it's it's been an honor and a pleasure, uh, you know, hosting you for this for this episode. Uh, you you're doing some awesome work for the for the for the world. To be honest with you, like I said, it's you know to to think about you know think outside the box and and say you know what uh, all these memorial day kind of parades and stuff are, are canceled let's let's do something as a tribute um and, and now it's picking up steam and momentum and it gets bigger and bigger every year so uh thank you so much and there's that's just you know I, like i said before I, I get a chance to talk to so many different people on this platform and i see the amazing work they're doing uh for for the world so i appreciate it it's an honor and a pleasure uh for me it's an honor and pleasure for the the, the men and women that wear the uniform or have worn the uniform, the military community. We, we appreciate what you're doing and thank you so much. Okay, thanks again for having me. Have a great Memorial Day. Absolutely. And if you don't mind hanging on till after the live so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes, but uh, uh, we wish you all the best and uh, we, you got a supporter here at the exchange, trust me. Thank so you. Uh, with, with that being said, uh, Chief Chat out. <laughs>